Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kempf. Uh, I'm working on VLC for a long time, and I'm going to talk about uh, what we did to port VLC on mobile OSs. Um, this is not the usual talk I give, so uh, I'm sorry if there are mistakes on it. Um, it's uh, one of the main focus uh, of uh, my development those days, so it's a lot of stuff are not completely set up. Uh, don't okay. hesitate me uh, and to ask questions and to interrupt me because that would mean that you're not sleeping and that would be lovely. Um, so I'm just going to remind a few stuff. So I'm a French engineer, I'm 31 years old, uh, I've been working on VLC since eight years now uh, and I spend most of my time now on VLC and related project on multimedia. Uh, everything I do is open source. Um, Mostly. I'm the president of the Videoland non-profit organization, which is a French non-profit that is uh, mainly here to help develop multimedia projects, including VLC, X264, and other uh, libraries that are used a lot. Um, I'm not going to speak about how VLC was created um, too much, because this is probably uh, the talk I give on Thursday. Uh, Yes, uh, you have to know that the reason VLC exists is because people, the students who were on the campus of the École Centrale Paris could not play Doom on a token ring network. And um, so they wanted a new network and that's why you got VLC. Um, um, VLC is a thing that no one knows but everyone uses. Uh, usually people don't know VLC, they know the cone player that plays everything. Uh, the story about the cone is uh, also very funny, but I can't uh, explain now. Um, I, I will be bribed um, later if you want. Um, VLC is known for two things. It plays everything, everything from completely stupid codecs, uh, MIDI and stuff that no one plays. Um, and it plays them everywhere. And, Everywhere. Um, we are very proud of our latest port to OS2 that was done uh, last year, and the three users are very happy too. <laughs> um, we work on um, some weird OSs uh, like BSD, um, and the reason why VLC was uh, very portable was that at the time where they, they started the project, one of the main ideas was to be cross platform. And when I mean cross-platform, we, we meant BOS and Linux. Huh? Um, Windows and OS X were software that, uh, ports that were added later. Uh, VLC is big. Uh, big means uh, around 900,000 downloads per day on our servers. So that's outside Linux distributions, that's outside download.com and all those scammy websites, um, and outside SourceForge and so on. Uh, on our... This slide is a bit outdated, I'm sorry, but since uh, we started counting, we counted more than two billion downloads. Um, what we do is uh, open source in the very bizarre way. I mean, uh, we don't have uh, 400 million uh, dollars per year funded uh, by donations, and we don't employ anyone uh, with this money. Um, so I can speak a little but I'm going to focus now on the port on the mobile um, So uh, This talk is mostly about the technical questions. If you have ports on the air, which are usual uh, questions, uh, you should refer to my FOSDEM talk that I'm going to do in two weeks. Uh, so please come to Brussels. Um, it's not far. Um, and here I'm just going to say a few stuff. Um, so I'm sorry, my mic seems to be on and off. Um, VLC does not exist. Uh, there is no spoon. Um, VLC is a very small wrapper around libvlc. So it's a 200 lines of code. Uh, and libvlc is a stable API above a core named libvlc core. As you see, we have like lots of great ideas how to name things. Um, but we are not the only ones. So libvlc core is basically the core of VLC. It's a, a very small um, piece of code, around 80,000 uh, 80, lines of code, maybe 100,000 with the comments uh, of POC that is basically doing um, network uh, threads uh, and a few abstractions between OSs, but it doesn't do anything. Um, everything that is a codec, a video output, an audio output uh, is done in a module. Um, this is a very standard way uh, when you see 
stuff like GStreamer, uh, QuickTime, Direct Show, Media Foundation, in, is a bit different from what you've seen with MPlayer, for example, who is just a monolithic thing. Um, so all the modules are done uh, and loaded at runtime, uh, and the graph is created at runtime. Um, the, the good thing about that uh, is that you can take the best on each platform. Um, so for when you do a cross-platform uh, multimedia solution, for example, video, you could say, well, okay, I'm going to take to do output OpenGL because OpenGL works everywhere, right? Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, every time you try to do something on OpenGL on Windows, <laughs> this is going to be painful. Um, same for audio outputs or even codecs. So it's always the same. Uh, so the design that was decided in when I was not even around and I wasn't... Uh, didn't know what a computer was, uh, was to have those modules. Um, and we have different types of modules, uh, like decoders, video outputs, and they are read, uh, loaded at runtime. So, what do you need to port VL uh, to a new platform? Uh, you need a compiler. Um, it seems obvious, but we are porting to a to a platform whose name is Windows Phone, to not name it, that doesn't have a compiler. Uh, I mean, doesn't have a working compiler, of course. <laughs> um, uh, you need a libc, I mean, a basic one, uh, malloc-free, um, a few string functions, um, uh, basically handle files and handling Unicode uh, strings would be enough. Uh, we need threads, and also in VLC we use uh, thread constellation points. Uh, issue we had with uh, porting to, to mobile ports. Um, we need a uh, network, um, and we, when we mean not network, we need the usual BSD sockets. Uh, it seems obvious, but it isn't on all platforms. And we need a way to basically load modules at runtime, um, which we can't do also on all platforms. And so those are basically the core of VLC that needs to have all those. And then we need audio output in order to output Yes, one is following. And a video output to output. Thanks. Um, we know usually a UI, uh, but the UI is boring, so we don't care about and I won't cover UI stuff because... Um, we also need some on mobile ports, uh, codec APIs. So I'm going to start with the worst, uh, which is iOS. iOS is a very bad OS because it's a very close um, OS. However, technically it's the best uh, mobile OS we have around. Why? It's basically it's exactly the same OS like, as Mac OS. Um, and when I mean exactly the same, it means the exact same bugs. Um, so the pthread and signal implementation on Mac OS is broken, and it's broken in the same way on iOS. But we've been working on OS 10 for 10 years and working around uh, those bugs, so we know that. Um, the biggest limitation is that everything needs to be statically uh, link. Uh, so you don't ship uh, .so, you ship .a on iOS um, through the App Store, but also in jailbroken systems. Um, <clears throat> and so that's one of the issues. We had to <clears throat> compile everything inside a, a big libvlc module, which is a .a that has libvlc, libvlc core, and all the modules uh, together, and all the libraries also. Um, so that makes a .a that is 14 megabytes, <clears throat> and we have to support multiple architectures, uh, ARMv6, ARMv7, ARMv7s, ARMv8, which makes a big blob, but that's the way you do it on iOS. And it doesn't support multicast. Uh, I don't know, we filed bugs, it was broken, it works fine on OS X. I... Um, there is just a few limitations. Um, you use audio units iOS and not uh, a whole uh, because it doesn't work and uh, uh, the audio unit on uh, iOS is limited to stereo. Don't know why. And um, the uh, shaders of the OpenGL output are completely buggy uh, on iOS. Uh, except that it was quite easy. It was the reason why it was done the first. Um, but it's not <coughs> because it works, right? Um, so now we are going to... Sp Um, VLC iOS is 100% open source. Uh, we support Android from 2.1 uh, 
mm. which means Android 7. Uh, it's a full video player. We play everything that we play uh, on the desktop. Uh, the biggest difference is that it has a multimedia library uh, with SQLite, and uh, it's also a great audio player. Uh, and we can't say that about VLC on the desktop. Oops. Oops. Sorry. My slide have a small issue. Um, so Android is technically very bad. Uh, so we went from iOS where everything was quite correct. Android is bad and it's a mess. Um, so no one understand anything. The NDK is completely limited. Um, everyone is, uh, all the manufacturers are hacking stuff everywhere. So it's very difficult. And when people complain about fragmentation on Android, they are speaking about different size of screen. <laughs> this is like just a joke for us. Um, because we need to, every GPU, every DSP has a different bug. Um, every manufacturer is modifying the headers that are supposedly public. So the structures are all the same, all, all different, which is ABI breakage, API breakage all the time. Um, and a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers are solving the issue by adding extra craft on stage fright, which is a middle layer uh, um, API saying, well, it works on the YouTube. Um, so next, um, then there are the, f the first issue is that um, Android com com uh, compared to iOS supports shared objects. I say, well, great, yes but it's limited to 20 shared objects. Why? Don't know. Um, on the Samsung device since uh, 3.0, it works up to 40 shared objects per process. But on the old HTC, until 4.3, you're limited to 20. It's not documented anywhere. You just need to try to see the issue. So we went the exact same route as iOS. We have uh, statically linked everything into a big shared object, libvlcgni.so, uh, that has everything. So the, the, the resulting one is a shared object, but uh, it's completely ugly. And so you load everything. Nick, uh, libcf Android is... Yes, I lost my... No. Um, the, uh, the... Okay, it's weird. Um, it was too, too simple to take a, a working libc, so they had to rewrite one, of course. Um, and of course, it's completely broken. Uh, so pthread was broken, no uh, uh, read-write locks. pthread cons I put it here. Is it better? Yes. I don't. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes? OK. Um, so pthread was broken. Um, the read-write lock were not implemented. Uh, it was, of course, buggy. So the solution was to take some part of uh, the libc on uh, Android open source version on, of the version 11 and to statically link into the libvlc. Um, we love that. Um, every, every printf with Wildcard and Unicode was also broken, so we did the same, took stuff, uh, and we linked them statically to every SO we do. Um, they decided, of course, that the OFT was going to be 32 bits, and that's an OS built in the 21st century, yes. So, I mean, wow, even Windows fixed that in early 1998. Um, so, incredible. The multicast is so broken that we disabled it. Um, and this is just the one that I, like, on the top of my head uh, when I was flying. He, there are so many others. Uh, I, I don't understand why uh, they didn't take a, a BSD uh, um, LibC. Um, but that was a simple part. <laughs> because then, I mean, VLC, <laughs> we just care about, like, actually outputting audio and video. Uh, this is just a, a very early, early uh, diagram, uh, just to, there are so many layers on Android, it's insane. Um, there is, just for audio, audio track, audio flinger, 
um, different version with a binder, audio player, there is the awesome player, there is stage fright. Um, and you need to know what is, and of course, nothing is supposed to be public except the Java APIs. And well, you're basically a C player, you're a multimedia framework, you want to write in C. Uh, so you tried many places and you hope that it's going to work. Examples. For the audio, the only official API is the uh, audio track Java API. Um, so the audio, it's good, it's working. The problem is that it's quite slow and the delay uh, computation uh, function is broken. Uh, what is a delay computation? It's mostly to know how many buffers you've already sent to the audio output in order to have lip sync, right? So, I mean, after 40 milliseconds, you see the lip sync issues. Um, so this one is the one that we know works, uh, but it's, so basically you're, you're setting audio from the C, you're mem copying it to the Java, and then you're sending it back two layers back to the drivers. So that's awesome design and already, I don't know, five or six mem copies. And as uh, our beloved uh, Libavi people say, mem copies murder in multimedia. Um, so that's bad. Well, so that's not problem. Let's go directly to audio track. Audio track is native. Uh, we can do that. So that's pulling a, um, a header that is, of course, not open. And that is, well, it's open, but it's not public. And it doesn't have any delay uh, computing function at all. So, well, you're on your own. Um, so we try to do stuff. And probably what we're going to do is that we're going to do, keep this one but call in the Java uh, side in order to get the computing delay options. The funny also with this audio track native is that every, um, deciding it starting in Android 4.2 to inline most of the function in the headers, right? So that should be fine, except that a lot of, um, a lot of uh, manufacturers started to add uh, new stuff inside the structure in the same headers. The result is that it's very difficult to know if you're going to be able to DL open and to find the right function starting on since 4.2. Well, then you complain to Google that we do. We, we do that a lot. Um, and though and they said, okay, we have a solution. We're going to implement you a new stuff, Android Open SLES. Wow, it's open, it's supposed to be great. Well, of course it's open. Well, Android OpenSLES is implemented above AudioTrack, right? And of course, it's not used by any Google application. Do you imagine how big it is? Yes, it is. Um, it works fine if you don't resample, ever, <laughs> ever. So if you output 48,000 Hertz, it's going to work. Anything else is not going to work. Even on the Nexus devices, outputting 44, uh, dot one is going to be broken. And well, and even on the Nexus 5, it works on 4.2, but not on 4.3. It works on 4.4, but not on 5.0. <laughs> and this is the official, um, the official output we have in VLC um, on Android. And this one is the only public API you have in C. Great. Well, that's not a problem. We are going to go deeper. We are going audio flinger. Yes, but then we have the same issue. As your finger is too low, and many hardware people are fixing the bugs above it in audio track in order to have basically um, YouTube app works. If the YouTube app works, that's great because it's used stage fright and the new media codec, uh, the old media player API. But starting from 4.2 and 3 um, in video, they added a new API called media codec, and they are starting to have new. Um, application like the new YouTube who are using this new stack. And this is the reason why you see so many devices who are blocked at Android 4.2 is that the, the, the step from 4.2 to 4.3, then you get the new YouTube apps and then it's broken. Um, so audio finger is working great, but it's not portable. Video, well, video is the same. Um, so before Android uh, 2.1, it's almost impossible except mem copying every frame, so in RGB. So it's not good for video, right? 
Um, on Android 2.1 and 2.2, you don't have any way to output correctly in C um, uh, video. So what you can do is the open Surface Flinger. Um, Surface Flinger is, of course, a private API. Um, and you need some headers that are from Android 2.3. You can only output RGB. Uh, anything else is not working. Of course, I mean, we are in the 21st century. We do video. All the chips support YUV since mid-90s. Why have a way to output YUV? So it's pure RGB, so everyone, and there is no way to access the, the scaler. So you do that in, on the CPU and you kill your performance. Um, starting from Android 2.3, we have finally a, a standard API to get uh, Android native window. Uh, it's great, it works fine, but you can have access only to one buffer. Um, which is a bit slow. So while you're filling your, your buffer on, in order to display it, you're blocking all the chain. Um, if you want to have more than one surface, uh, you can use Android native window private. And once again, those are private headers that change. So in the way, in order to do that, we are doing, um, we are recompiling, when we compile VLC, lib and native window shared object version 11, 14, 18, and 21. And at runtime, with the different headers, at runtime, we are going to load and see which one is going actually to load. And then our video output is actually going to load this library that is going to. It works fine uh, with that. And that's for the main release of Android 1, uh, VLC for Android 1.0. We have uh, up to 16 or 32 buffers. Uh, which is great because then you can do full uh, uh, direct rendering uh, using libav codec. Uh, you can even have YUV surfaces, and you can even, with a kind of hack, know if your surface is going to uh, support YUV or RGB. Um, of course, it's NV21 and not y, uh, YUV420, but it's pretty cool. Can also manage uh, opaque uh, opac buffers, which is good when you do full hardware decoding. So in the end, now it sounds to be good, but you need to do quite a few hacks. Um, we tried the OpenGL ES way. We don't recommend it to anyone. Um, it's a mess. The EGL is not working. Um, it's also conflicting mostly with the uh, Java side. So if you have to, uh, for example, display any widget above it, you're going to have a lot of pain. Uh, don't do that. Uh, codex. Codex, codex, codex. So um, uh, there is OpenMax. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking of the IL one, of course. Um, but the, you cannot access the OpenMax. You need to go through the binder, like everything on Android. Uh, so we have this kind of IOMX, which is IPC. Uh, OMX IPC. Uh, it works since 2.3. Um, of course, you cannot do full GPU zero copy because you cannot, buff it's very difficult to allocate the buffers. And, well, technically you can allocate the buffers, but you can't display them um, because you need an extra set of private APIs. Uh, or you could do that only in RGB, but most of the OpenMax uh, decoders don't output RGB. Um, Starting from Android 3.0, um, which, if I remember correctly, was not open source until 3.2, um, you can use the same mechanism, but you can access to Graloc, which, is, which allows you uh, to um, allocate correctly those buffers and to display them. Uh, it's a hack because IOMX and Graloc is completely uh, not public, but it works. Mostly it works on the NVIDIA tablets, which was the important ones, uh, the famous Tegra 2, uh, which were Amazing chips with no neon. Yes. Um, starting in 4.1, um, we, after complaining a lot, um, we received Media Codec. Uh, Media Codec is finally a new API uh, from Android that you can access to get access to hardware decoders. Great. Great, great, great. They, they just said, okay, you need to output uh, buffers in YUV420. But they did not explain the layout. And there was no test case in, on the test suite of Android to check the layout. What happened? Of course, all of them were broken. 
um, because everyone was using a different pixel format. Uh, we, um, we spent a bit of time with Martin uh, from Libevi uh, to finally merge a test case. So starting in 4.3, we are sure now that the buffer output are still 4.2.0, but are the same layout. Um, so starting from 4.3, you can actually use media codec. Uh, you can use software and hardware uh, rendering, and it works fine, but it's still in Java. Uh, starting in 5.0, you have a version, you can do that, but um, you can do it directly from C. Except it's still broken in 5.0, the C version, so you need still to use the Java. It's going to be fixed in uh, Android 5. Um, let's, so we started VL port VLC on Android two years ago. That was the first UI. <coughs> uh, uh, we released our, on Google Play uh, only for ARMv7 at the beginning. It is GPLv3. Um, well, technically, the code is GPLv2 or later, but on Android, it's impossible mostly to have GPLv2 uh, code because you need to link to code that are Apache 2, which makes it GPLv3. Sure. Uh, we made a lot of iteration in order to make it less shitty and less horrible. That was the first version that was actually usable. Um, and, but it was black. And then we redesigned it to be a bit more holo-like. And we finished the holo uh, design not too long ago when they started to give us the new uh, design, of course. <laughs> um, and that's it for Android. Um, I'm just going to give you a few laughs and speaking about the port of WinRT. So, uh, port of WinRT, we don't have a compiler, uh, we don't have a libc, because you can't access to file, um, you can't have UTF-8, um, the, you don't have a C99 compiler, you don't have thread cancellation, um, you don't have network, you don't have sockets, yes. Yes, there is only their new WinRT sockets, which are in asynchronous sockets. Um, for the thread counseling points, we have a wake up of every thread every 50 milliseconds. Amazing. Um, we, we are able to deal open any library that we ship. So, a contrario from iOS and Android, we actually ship DLLs. But it doesn't work uh, on Windows 8.0. It only works in 8.1 because it's buggy after 25 libraries that you load. Um, audio output, well, um, you can't use uh, Wasapi correctly because if you do that, you don't have background audio. So that's problematic for the um, audio output. Uh, on video output, you can't have any YUV surface. Uh, so we wrote uh, a direct 2D um, special filter that, of course, does not work on all the Windows phones. And, of course, you cannot... Um, everything that you do for the UI must be in C-sharp. And in order to d discuss from the C-sharp to the C level, you need a special language called uh, C++ CX. But we did it. Thanks. If you have questions, uh, I'm available, and I think uh, I took a bit already too much time. Um, so if you have more questions, I can take questions after also. I go do a talk on Thursday, and I'll do a talk on at the first day. So we can take a couple of questions. We've got quick ones. Any quick questions? A lot of a lot of platforms to uh, do programming for. How do you solve the problem of testing for all these platforms and even devices or versions of, of yeah whatever devices and and software? So the good part is that most of the code is similar um, because. Um, most of the code is libvlc, and then we reflect it to the different language to do the UIs. So most of the code is similar, and we just have very limited parts for the video output, the audio outputs, and so on. 
How do we test? I'm sorry to say that most of our tests, of course, we do what we can, but most of the tests is what I call crowdsources testing. <laughs> We send a version, <laughs> we, we wait for the bugs, we fix the bug, we release. Um, it's very bad, but there is no other solution, especially for Android. Um, for the testing of the lower level, I, I advise you to ask uh, Diego, who is there, how they actually do the testing for the codecs, because that's one of the most useful uh, cases for uh, VLC. Thanks. With the number... Android versions you're supporting, what's your plans for deprecating and then None. supporting new versions? None. Um, so now um, the version 1.0 was tag and we're working a lot on 1.1 which is the first version that is almost released that is material design and we spend our time checking that it still works uh, since Android 2.1. Um, the reason is that we don't we try to do a software project that is cool and that is technically interesting. And we don't deprecate stuff because uh, we need to deprecate. So most of the Java compatibility libraries shipped by Android for material design start at V7, which is Android 2.1. So we are doing our best to keep compatibility. Um, I don't see us dropping. Um, so we might drop at some point 2.1 and 2.2 because of the video output, but. I don't think that we will drop uh, 2.3 ever. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Sorry. 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 Sorry.